Joining us now, Skyping in from Tel Aviv, Newsmax contributor Elliot Jager. Uh, Elliot, we're hearing that Arab protests are mushrooming following the stabbing. What is the situation on the ground there? Well, it's just turned dark here in Israel. Uh, it's been a relatively quiet day. In fact, for Israelis, it's been a day of funerals. A uh, funeral of a young woman, a 26-year-old woman who was murdered yesterday, and the soldier who you mentioned. It's not a suspected terrorist attack. It was an outright terrorist attack. So today was a day of funerals. As it gets dark, right now I'm getting some reports that uh, the rioting and the violence is picking up. There were some fire bombs thrown near the Hebrew University in Jerusalem uh, and elsewhere in Jerusalem. So we're, we're looking for another difficult night. And mindful of that, Elliot, uh, we saw a war this past summer with uh, the combatants, the terrorists coming uh, from the Palestinian uh, designated properties. Will this be more interior strife in Israel with the Arab community already there, or are these others who are coming in surreptitiously? Well, I think the thing to remember is Israel is a very, very small country. Uh, whether you include Judea and Samaria, where the Palestinian Authority is based in Gaza or not, uh, the troubles we face are in Jerusalem, metropolitan Jerusalem, where the, the Arab population uh, has all of the rights. Uh, once the city was reun reunited, the Arab population has all the rights of, uh, of regular Israeli citizens. Um, and the problems are also in the Arab areas of Israel within the 1949 armistice lines uh, in the Gali area, where there's a very large concentration of, uh, of, of Israelis who have Ar of Arabs who have Israeli citizenship. So I, I, the problem is actually all over. Uh, the problem is in Judea and Samaria, where we had one terrorist attack yesterday, and in metropolitan Tel Aviv, and in uh, the Galilee. So um, the Arab population, of course, is emboldened and is mobilized by what's happening throughout the Muslim Arab world. I think you have to understand what's going on here as not isolated to Israel or the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, but part of, very, of an upheaval that's going on among all the neighbors and the, the Arabs of Israel are influenced by what's going on just as much as the Arabs in Syria or the Arabs in Iraq. Which takes me back to Iran. Now, we just heard at the outset from Prime Minister Netanyahu his comments made in the wake of Iran's Ayatollah Khamenei allegedly tweeting out a guide about the nine key ways to eliminate Israel. That tweet, well, needlessly provocative, uh, was it psychological operation? What's your take on what the uh, Ayatollah tweeted out? <laughs> well, first of all, you got to believe that he knows how to tweet. Uh, but clearly, it was put out by his by by his own people. I don't think the prime minister would have made those comments if Israeli intelligence thought it was a hoax. Uh, look, I think right now Israel is very very concerned about what the Obama administration is doing. Um, the Obama administration seems to be heading towards a situation where they will give Iran the power to put all of the ingredients for an atomic bomb on the shelf and all they have to, and they just have to promise not to put them together and that will be called a deal that's dangerous for Israel it's very dangerous for the region including for the uh, Saudi Arabia and, and other American other Arab countries that are American allies and of course it's dangerous for the United States because um, you know, Iran it has a history of terrorism, and um, if they are emboldened and actually have a nuclear power, well, my goodness, uh, not much is going to stop them. And it, they don't have to use it. They just have to have it as a deterrence, and they can more or less bully their way in the Middle East, bully the Arabs. Don't forget, the Iranians are not Arabs. Bully the Arabs and try to bully Israel. And mindful of that, uh, you mentioned the relationship between the Obama administration and Prime Minister Netanyahu. Vice President Joe Biden weighed in in a kind of curious and cavalier way. Let's take an interest uh, and listen to what the Veep had to say. Now, Ron, you better damn well report to Bibi that we're still buddies. And I'm, you know, <laughs> you got it, right? I signed a picture for Bibi a long time ago. I have a bad habit of no one ever doubts I mean what I say. Sometimes I say all that I mean, though. And, um, and uh, I signed a picture a long time for Bibi. He's been a friend for over 30 years. I said, Bibi, I don't agree with the damn thing you say, but I love you. 20 seconds remain, Elliot. Joe Biden helping or hurting the situation? Well, 
there he goes again. Uh, he doesn't, Joe Biden's not the president of the United States, and the fact that he said he disagrees with the prime minister more than he agrees with him tells me that he agrees with the Iranians more than he agrees with the Israelis. He agrees with Mahmoud, uh, Mahmoud Abbas more than he agrees with Benjamin Netanyahu. That's, that's disturbing. Elliot Jager, we will have to leave it there. Thank you for Skyping in from Tel Aviv.